Next question is from Meg All Phases Fitness. What are some tips for building a team of trainers? Oh man, I, I like this. I love this question. Yeah. You know, I I I'll tell you the mistake I made when I first started uh, it managing trainers, and then how I evolved. Mm. The mistake I made early on was looking at the most edu- trying the to get the most educated, educated ones. Yes. yes. So like yeah. someone would come to me and oh, I have a master's in sports medicine, or I have a bachelor's in you know whatever, and that would be the person that I would hire over. The new dude or girl who comes in uh, who just got a national cert, you know, to, in order to work there, mm-hmm. and it was a mistake because um, number one, they didn't necessarily have more applicable knowledge than the guy or girl who had the cert- certification. Here's why: um, you learn a lot with with that, that formal education, but we don't learn is how to apply it, which is everything. It really is everything. How to apply it yeah. is far more important than than passing tests and books and, and that kind of stuff. Number two, your ability to communicate to clients and your passion for what you were doing and your willingness to get new clients, motivate people to go that extra mile was far more valuable in terms of client success, but also success to the gym than formal education. Um, It took me a year to figure this out. I could see which trainers were doing great and which ones weren't doing that great. And I'd see the skills that they had and I'm like, oh, um, it's communication skills, it's applying their training, it's how good they work with people, far more valuable than, than you know, all the schooling that they had. Yeah, I, I agree. This was, um, it took me a long time to get to this place where I felt like I could build a team that uh, I didn't, I felt like I could get to a place. Like when I had Justin on the staff, by that time in my career, I got to a place where I felt like I really didn't have to work very much and the staff really carried the team, but it took me a long time to figure that out. One of the mistakes was, thinking that education was everything. I found out later on that I'd rather have somebody who had little to no education that I could mold into the trainer that I wanted them to be versus inheriting somebody who was really, really smart and did things their way. The other thing that I used to make a mistake on was trying to make all of my trainers like me. You know, uh, that was all I knew. Uh, I had success. So the things I taught was, okay, these are the things I'm successful at. I'm good at. Let me try and make this trainer like me or give them these attributes that I had. Um, that was also a mistake. It was, or at least it was fleeting. I'd find somebody who was like me and then we'd do well for a while, but then I'd burn out a bunch of other people that weren't later on. I began to look at my staff more like a football team. I have, you know, I've got linemen here. I've got a running back here. I've got a wide receiver here. And, and really celebrating their, their strengths and what they're great at and focusing on that. That is what served me really well was looking for that. So if I was to drop into a gym and I had to build a team right now and I had nothing, uh, I would look for a handful of trainers that are uh, young, li- minimal education that I could educate and teach and train. So I'd have a little core of that group. And then I'd actually go look for uh, specialties. I'd want to have the mobility guy the sports performance guy and guy or girl okay i'd want i'd want somebody who specializes in the, the nutrition person who's just dialed yeah. in or has a, so i'd want all these kind of specialty type people to complement my core group of yeah chameleons that could mm-hmm. that i'm going to develop that can train kind of anybody uh, that's how I would build a team now. And I think that would serve me better than going out and just looking for the smartest, most experienced trainer. Yeah. I like that. Uh, th- you know, that approach, I think that, um, really what you're looking for characteristic wise, uh, is somebody who can really problem solve and think on the fly. Uh, and you know, the communication skills are going to carry them much further than, uh, their actual knowledge uh, coming into it. A lot of this is, is, is learning and, and being able to be confident and uh, convey your confidence to, to the clients. And, mm-hmm. and, and really like they, they're the ones that are, are believing in what you're, you're doing with them. And so that's really like the importance of it is to, to, to establish these relationships, the one-on-one relationships, client to, to trainer, and uh, to to really be able to see how that uh, flourishes for them. To that point, that I think this is also what changed for me too. How I interviewed. So early on, it was just like it was trainer type questions. You know, what would you do in the case of this, or give me a case study of yeah. this. Like that completely changed later on in my career to like all behavioral based questions. Totally. Yeah. I wanted to get to the bottom of this person's character for the point that you're come you're bringing up right now, Justin. Is I want to learn about 
are you going to be able to problem solve when you're put in this type of situa situation? How do you react? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for the right characters to, to build in there. Forget the education piece. Forget all the experience of being a personal trainer. Yeah, those things are nice. If you don't have the right characteristics that I'm looking for for my team, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No, I, I do think it's good to have you know some elder people on staff with some wisdom that you know. So it's at least one or two, you know, so that you're not carrying all the load of having to like you know convey all that to each person. Well, that goes back to my point yeah. of like having these like special like yes. if you got this badass nutritionist, badass sports person, badass mobility person, they can help educate that core five or six that you have, right? So if you got this young these young minds that oh, are, I used to have yeah. them run classes for the rest. Of the team. Yes, because yeah. I would have that. You have the, your leaders within. Yeah. The, Absolutely, because here's group. here's the truth. The truth truth be told, uh, when you train the average person, a very small percentage of your knowledge is ever going to it can be applied to this person. Really, you're you're working with most people are either beginners or haven't worked out in a while. You're getting them to learn how to squat. You're getting them to learn how to row. You, you, all your your advanced education, you don't even use it. You don't need it in very small cases, in very you know few cases, you will. But for the vast majority, it's basic knowledge. You just need to know how to apply it and communicate it properly and work well with uh, with people. Uh, but you, what you said, Adam, is a hundred percent true. You know, you definitely want because you're going to get the occasional client that comes in and says. I want a trainer. Uh, I got in a bad car accident a year ago. Um, I've got really bad movement on my right side. I finished rehab. What trainer do you have working with me for you know for me? Okay, in that case, I want my rehab trainer who's really really good and educated, like you know, in sports medicine. That's the person we'll send you out with. Or you know, you have the person that's like, okay, I just had gastric bypass uh, surgery. Um, you know, I'm looking to hire a trainer. Okay, who's my my really really good? personable, excellent communicator, very empathetic trainer. That's the person that I want working with this person. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, your clients are, you know, average person, at least 30 pounds. I've been eating, you know, standard American diet, you know, whatever. I need to start working out two days a week or whatever. Then you'll have your general core. So I think what you said, Adam, was, uh, was absolutely yeah. mm -hmm. on point.